What's good? Chaotic Nation and PDL fans alike. Welcome back to the team builder for the finale of season six. This is the championship matchup versus Soy and the Grand Amaka Sendequils. Um, we got a, a very interesting matchup this week saying that Soy is and did complete the regular season 7-0, which means he is undefeated. Um, so uh, there is a lot on the line for this season. I am undefeated in postseason. Uh, games in PDL, Slowly is undefeated in the season, so something's giving here. Um, it's going to be a good battle. It's going to be a good battle, hopefully. I'm hoping to make it a little bit interesting, and I'm bringing some different things that I haven't used in the past um, to hopefully catch him off guard and hopefully have a really good strategy uh, to beat him. Also, starting off, we have Rillaboom here. I haven't brought Rillaboom in any of the matches versus Soy, but I've determined that it is essential for my victory, um, mostly because I don't have a way to deal with Rotom Wash other than Rillaboom. Uh, so I do have Rillaboom here this week for that option. Um, it is holding Life Orb, so it's going to be doing extra damage. Plus, I can mitigate that a little bit in Grassy Terrain, so I can heal back a little bit of my HP, not having to worry about that as much. Um, and Life Orb is better than Expert Belt and the fact that I get boosted power regardless of if it's stab um regardless if it's super effective or not i have life orb um because expert belt i believe uh does 1.2 times the damage life orb is 1.3 times the damage and with the cost of one tenth of max hp um the good part is i really don't have to worry about having too much hp in this battle because if i don't uh if i if i get hit um i'm probably dead anyway so I'm kind of playing with that in mind. If I get hit, I'm probably going to lose a Mon anyway. So there's really no point in not just going all out and running a Rillaboom like this. It is a typical one that we've seen before. I am max attack over special attack, adamant nature with uh, 31 IVs in every single stat, max HP and max attack. So I am bulky enough to take a hit. Um, but I also have really good offensive strategies um, and maxed out in that to try to deal with it. Speed isn't really that relevant. In this battle for Rillaboom, mostly because um, running max speed, I am sitting at about 295. Um, the majority of his team outspeeds 300. So I'm not really outspeeding anything that I really need to. Like Blaziken would be the thing that's closest that I would outspeed. So um, it doesn't really matter that I'm outspeeding things. And Rotom Wash outspeeds me, but that doesn't really matter because I'm going to be using a priority move for it. So... Um, Regardless, the speed didn't really matter too much. I am 31, just so I don't have to worry about that. But Rillaboom's in that middle speed tier, which doesn't really help us out. But um, 85 is not bad, um, but it's just middle of the ground. So his team is it's really fast or really slow. It's that There's no in-between, really, for the team. I am running Grassy Surge, and I have Grassy Glide, as I mentioned, um, for stab and priority in terrain. Um, I do expect Clef Key to kind of be running Misty Terrain, as we've seen in the past. To kind of deal with that i do have brick break for the cleft piece specifically that is to get rid of screens which have stalled me out in the past so i i can use that to get around it and i have earthquake for damage on it as well um and we have u-turn for utility and switching in and out i need to have the pivots on point this time around um so i am running that for a pivot and hopefully it'll be useful for the team uh, as for what Rillaboom is, Kelp to do good against, it beats Blaziken with Grassy Glide as long as it's um, under 53%. So if it's about half, I probably can one-shot it. If it's in the yellow, I one-shot it. So uh, that is guaranteed there um, to note. So if it gets Speed Boost Blaziken, I just have to give it enough damage that uh, Rillaboom can come in and finish it. Um, it beats Starmanitan. It beats uh, Espeon. Uh, it beats Clef Key. It's a weird matchup, but it is one of my counters to Klefki. I think everything this week is kind of geared towards beating Klefki in some manner or respect. So, uh, specifically with Rillaboom, gets rid of the screens um, and has Earthquake for super effective damage. So, th those are the kind of plays there. It beats Gleepion um, with Grassy Glide at under under 36%. So, um, I, I'm calcing Grassy Glides because I need to calc priority uh, a little bit so I can come in. It's my primary and solidary counter. For Rotom Wash, I don't really have anything outside of that that can really deal with it. Um, so it is my counter for Rotom Wash. Uh, so I got to be careful about using the Rillaboom for other things, especially if Wash is on the team. Um, but if Wash isn't there, I have other ways to get around it. And I don't have to worry about that fight specifically. It's got an interesting matchup where Scrafty can win, also can lose. Uh, Tangrowth, as long as it's under a fourth of its HP, so 25%. 
we one shot with Grassy Glide. Uh, Togekiss is the same role, um, and Torkoal is a little bit less at 20%. So I, I've calculated all those things out. I'm not going to use probably Rilu Moon for those matchups anyway. So I wanted to have those calc just in case I needed to switch in and use Grassy Glide. So um, I know Soy's strategy here is kind of to stall out whatever I wanted to use and then run his regular fade. Um, so that's what the Klefki's done in the past. We've seen it happen in both battles. So I just got to be prepped for that. Um, and I'm hoping that Rillaboom is kind of a disruptor of that with Brick Break because his way to usually deal with it is screens. Um, and he doesn't really have a lot to do. Uh, foul Play is going to do a bit of damage, but I do get that returned. And also, if he goes for Foul Play, I am faster with Earthquake, and I should be able to do a massive chunk of damage to him. So, barring a weakness policy set, we should be pretty good on that, um, on the cleft key with Rillaboom. Up next is Darmanitan, and I did mention this, um, I think back in week two, that I said Darmanitan would be a really good bring for the team. Um, and it is. I wanted to run a special Darmanitan this week and make use of Darmanitan's um, Zen, Zen Mode ability because uh, this one specifically is not does not have to have one or the other. Uh, Ice type Darmanitan is required to be Zen Mode because Gorilla Tactics is banned um, as an ability from the league. So um, I could have run the other way, but I determined that trying to get Darmanitan set up um, was going to be helpful. And special, having a special Darmanitan would have been nice. It's just incredibly slow, and I can't use it for that. So uh, this Darmanitan is something we've seen in the past. Um, it is max attack, max speed with speed boost. Uh, nature with Jolly, so speed over special attack, and a little bit of investment in defense. Flare Blade U-Turn, Rock Slide, and Earthquake for extra damage. And this week, I am running the Joy Scarf because I wanted to outspeed. I do fear that if the Dar other Darmanitan shows up, it is going to be a speed tie. And it's going to come down to, to that. So I want to have the Choice Scarf there as an option. As well as to be a fast option for the team. Again, I said his team was pretty fast. My team is mid-speed tier. He's sitting at 95 base. Uh, 317 gets boosted. Uh, what is it? Two times or 1.5 times? I think it's two times. Uh, it gets boosted 1.5 times. So that roughly puts us at like uh, almost 500. Just under 500 um, speed tier. Uh, so that'll be helpful for us, and I'm trying to, to use our main attain in, in a kind of a disruptive, fast way. Um, this week, I think being slower wouldn't have helped too much, but having this priority is also going to be useful. Plus, Choice Scarf um, on, a, on a trick or a switch of Rue from Klefki, which is a good counter, which is what Darmanitan's here to counter primarily, would also render that pretty useless. So... That's going to be a nice tech for me to have. I got I have to think about the Klefki this time around. You notice that I'm really preparing for it. It's really annoying. There's no way so he doesn't bring it. And if he does, I probably can win just by not dealing with that thing. Um, sort of like how we did Dragapult with 2e last time. Um, I feel like that's a misplay if you don't bring it. So I'm really prepping for it. I'm trying to have something to deal with it on the team in every kind of aspect. So... Um, that's kind of the play here. It beats Blaziken at plus two. Um, I don't have a plus two, so I don't know what that's for. Um, oh, it's faster than Blaziken at plus two speed boost. So if Blaziken gets the two times speed boost, um, I cannot speed it still with rocks and hit it with rock slider earthquake for suit and one shot it. So um, that's a counter for uh, Blaziken. It's a speed tie with our mannequin, as I mentioned. They're both 95 base. Uh, assuming that he's speed invested and choice scarf, it would be a speed tie. They would be exactly the same speed. So um, that's going to come down to if he's scarfed or not, which I'm hoping he's not. Uh, we do win as long as it's not scarfed because I do one shot with uh, pretty much any move I could click, honestly. So um, U turn is the only exception to that, really. Um, that's going to be my problem here with our Manitan is having to be locked into a move, um, which, you know, switching might not be the worst case at that point in time. We also beat Espeon with U-Turn. Haxorus is beatable at 50%. Uh, it's a primary counter to Klefki. And I have wrote no reflect. Because if it's reflect Klefki, it does mitigate my damage for a turn. And if he knows I'm Scarf, that kind of shuts me down. Um, so I do have to watch that. It beats Leafeon. Um, I don't know what BSR is. Oh, it beats Leafeon with Stealth Rocks. Um... And also in the sun, I think. Not in the sun, I don't know. Um, so that's the play. Oh, and oh, it beats Leafeon with Stealth Rocks or in Hail, so it has chip damage and it can knock it down. That's the difference, uh, which basically give away another one of my mon, but that, that's okay. 
Um, I am running Sheer Force as well as the ability this week. I, I I made this team like a little like a week ago, so I'm a little bit hazy on what everything's supposed to be. But this is what these team builders are for, right? Um, it also beats Rotom Wash at under 50 percent so 40 to 47 is the roll on flare blitz in the sun it would be a lot higher so we might have to watch that in case that's need a cleft key is the strategy to deal with my hail um it can beat scrafty scrafty's a weird matchup i don't think he's gonna bring scrafty but scrafty can cause problems for my team especially a dragon dancing asset so that is just something to note it beats tang growth um at 62.5 percent with stealth rocks so i've, I've calped a lot of different things here and Kind of did, ran some niche setups. Uh, it beats Togekiss on a whim. I kind of need a rock slide punch, and I also need to be faster and not uh, mitigated by any kind of like screen or anything like that. So it, it can't do that. And it also beats Volcarona, primary counter for Volcarona and Quivering it's set. So um, Darmantian is hopefully going to be useful for some answers this week, and um, that's what I'm hoping. So see what it does. Up next, we got Pterodactyl, and I think I have not run this um, since week two. Uh, week two was the, the week that we had all of... Oh, I did run a week five. Um, of course, I ran a weakness policy set week five. So week two, we ran the Focus Sash set, which didn't work because we had lagging tail problems uh, because of the cleft key. Week six, uh, not week six, week five, we ran the weakness policy set, which I never used in battle, so... Um, Kinda didn't get a chance to show Aerodactyl off in that one, but I did think it was worthwhile to bring again for the Season 6 Champion Battle. And this week, we are again running a different item. It is Life Orb. I'm running Double Life Orb. As I said, damage really doesn't matter to me. I just want to be able to hit things. Uh, I believe Aerodactyl at max speed is Jolly Nature Speed over Special Attack, as per usual. I believe that is faster than his entire team, 394. Um, I'm not seeing anything faster than that. Obviously, a Choice Scarf would be a problem, so um, I do expect Choice Scarf wash to kind of deal with this again and also choice start their manitan so i that's why i have my own choice card user in the back uh to kind of deal with that and plus a priority move to deal with my problem there uh with rotom wash being faster and everything but um life orb is going to be really helpful here and uh, can do some damage here um but i'm running a different set i don't i didn't run dragon dance on this last time but i am running dragon dance this week, if I get an opportunity to kind of predict which in, I can set up my speed a little bit more. So if I have to deal with uh, speed boost Blaziken, that's an option um, to do as well. If I have to predict like a sword stance or a protect or something. Um, I do have Rock Slide, Earthquake, and Wing, Dual Wing Beat as standard moves. I think I've run those in the past. Um, yeah, I, I, I did run those in the past. Week 5, I just swapped out um, Stealth Rock for Dragon Dance. And week 2, I got rid of Tailwind. Um, so I've just basically swapped that last slot. I want Earthquake there for the uh, Clef Key, as I mentioned. So that's that's whole its whole purpose. But I am running Life Orb, I am running Rocket. Obviously, it didn't really matter what I ran on the ability and on Jolly. So that is helpful here. With this set, uh, Aerodactyl is a counter for Blaziken. It beats Darmanitan as long as it's not Scarf, which I just mentioned. Uh, it beats Espeon if it's plus one Dragon Dance, so we can Oko. Because um, Espeon does a lot of damage. It beats Haxorus. Uh, inhale or with stealth rocks damage because it, it lives on like five percent uh consistently so it's very helpful to have to have a little bit of chip there to, to, to kind of mitigate the hacks risk a little bit um it is a use it's useful for klefki with no reflect reflect is always a big problem for my team i'm running a lot of physical attackers to deal with klefki i think soy realizes that kind of why i wanted to run special darmanitan um because i think a, a cheeky flamethrower or a fire blast would have caught him off guard um, but we do have Rillaboom to deal with the screen, so that's not really too bad of an issue. Um, hopefully, uh, it does beat Leafy on with Stealth Rocks or in the Hail. It beats Scrafty, it beats Tangrowth, and it also can set up on Tangrowth um, at least one turn, so that's an option for us as long as I land my attacks. That's another very important thing. I gotta land my attacks. It beats Togekiss as long as it's not a bulky set. Um, even if it is a bulky set, I rock slide, I get a flinch. Um, that'll be enough. To help us out there it beats Twerkel as a setup option and it also can deal with Volcarona so um kind of an option for the faster things the, the fire types really sway is a massive weakness to you flying and rock which flying rock type <laughs> so um this makes sense although he does have a really good counter to this and the uh, so as long as I'm faster um 
we should be okay. I'm going to have to remember that the scarf is a possibility and things when we get there, but um, hoping Aerodactyl can do some work this week, and um, maybe I'll even use it this time around. Up next is Dedichu, our shiny Mimikyu. It didn't matter that it was shiny. I just kind of used it because it had the stat distribution I wanted and was already EV trained in the right way. Max attack, max speed, adamant nature, boosting attack over speed. Um, which puts this pretty fast. It is slightly faster than the Real Boom at 95. So if something like the Darmanitan, which is all no, the Real Boom is 85. Darmanitan is 95 base speed. If it's if we get to the you know Galarian Darmanitan and we have this, we outspeed it by one base stack, regardless of uh, as long as it's not uh, a speed boosting nature. So we can figure that out as we go. But um, it's it's not really meant to be fast. It's kind of mid speed tier for a reason, and uh, that's why it's here. Uh, but I am running uh, Disguise this week, and this is a really jank set. Um, I am running Razor Claw, and that's kind of weird. And this is kind of my little secret tech this week, because Razor Claw boosts critical hit ratios, and I'm running Shadow Claw. So, um, Shadow Claw boosting critical hit ratio, and also having a move that hits critical hits more effectively can make um, Dedichu a really good option for the team. Also, it allows me to get those crits that might help turn the tide of the battle a little bit here. I'm running Shadow Sneak for priority. I uh, play rough for another stab, and I'm running the fun little move of Destiny Bond this week. Destiny Bond is there to kind of give me the, the edge to deal with something. Um, Klefki could be an option here to do some, do some really uh, good damage to me. I have Destiny Bond as a way to kind of deal with something, take it out, and then allow the rest of my team to do some work. So Mimikyu's there for that reason specifically this week, kind of as an option to get rid of dangerous threats in the back um, and open the way for the rest of my team. So once we use Destiny Bond, obviously Soy will note it and have it. So we just kind of got to mitigate when we use that. Um, if all... If everything goes completely terrible the first round, I'm probably going to rely on this as my second round and kind of pull me out of the, the depth strategy, and hopefully something goes well with it. Uh, Mimikyu is built to beat uh, Blaziken with a crit, and in Disguise, I have to have Disguise up because Blaziken will rock my crap if I don't. We beat Darmanitan as long as we have Disguise up, beat Espeon as long as we have Disguise, beat Haxorus, um, beat Clefiki if we crit twice in a row with Shadow Claw. We have to crit twice. Um... Which is a lot of fun. Uh, we can beat Leafy on. It's a weird matchup. We beat Rotom Wash with a crit as well. We are we perfect to counter for a Scrafty. This is the only thing that really wants to deal with it consistently. So it's a perfect counter for that. Um, it beats Tangrowth if it crits literally every single time it tries to do anything, regardless of what move I select. So <laughs> that's an option there. Uh, we beat Togekiss uh, as long as we crit and we have a Disguise up. And uh, we beat Volcarona with crit. So, as you can see, Mimikyu kind of sucks without crits, uh, which is why we're running Razor Claw this week, because that would be very helpful. Especially a crit like Shadow Sneak could be an option, could be an out that I have to use. A crit play rough could be very nice for low rank attack. And then, obviously, Shadow Claw for stab and the higher crit chance. That's going to be the go to. Um, and then Destiny Bond for a little bit of cheekiness. So, I'm hoping this works well. I thought of. Like, I came into this battle thinking I need to find some random and very niche way to beat Soy because he's going to figure out my stuff. He already, he seems like he knew my, my team before I even came into the battle every time we battled so far. So having this really jank mimic you set might be a, might be a counter to that. And um, it might be my ace in the hole that might win me the game. So uh, I'm hoping that Dedichu does some work here and I'm really looking forward to using this thing or not. I mean, every time I build up on mimic you, I don't get it. To use it so that's fine it might work it's honestly this point is just rng blessed at, at, at that point so see what happens up next is alolan nine tails i specifically had to rebreed this one because of hypnosis you guys may have seen hypnosis shenanigans in our last battle versus wolfos in week uh six yes week six uh i'm doing that again because again i needed some way to beat soy and here we go. I am running wide lens, so uh, the accuracy of hypnosis is now 66%. Um, and I also have Blizzard on this set as well, so if Blizzard would be outside of the hail for whatever reason, it is now 77% accurate instead of um, instead of 70. Uh, we also have Moonblast as a as a prior as a priority move, as a stab move and for damage, and Aurora Veil for a nice cheeky way to, to do some little um, screens ourselves to deal with that Mimikyu a little bit better. 
Um, Nine Tables is a very niche bring. Again, it's not really meant to deal with a lot. It's kind of like Mimikyu in that sense. Uh, that it's supposed to kind of deal with everything. Manly. But it can also be a big pain in the butt. Um, a Nine Tails beats Blaziken if it's asleep. Nine Tails beats Star Alarion Dar Alolan Darmanitan. Galarian Darmanitan if it's asleep. And I have Veil up. Um, and it's not Scarfed. I don't need Veil up for that. It beats Espeon with Veil. Um, it, it deals with Haxorus pretty pretty well. Poison Jab Haxorus would be the only... And, uh, and or Iron Head or Iron Tail. Haxorus would be the only counters to it, which he might run. Um, that's just something we have to scout. Beats Leafeon. Uh, as long as we're not in the sun, beats Road and Wash with Veil and no Scarf, beats Scrafty, beats uh, Tangrowth as long as it's on Assault Vest, and we have Hail, and it beats the Togekiss as long as it doesn't hold a Flamethrower or a Fire Blast or a Fire Type move, because so we would probably calc for that for some reason. So that is my Nine Tails set. Uh, I didn't go over what its stat distribution is, but it is above me. You can see it: max speed, max special attack, same in nature, boosting speed over special attack, and I'm running wide lens as I said to boost the accuracy of moves. Um, because it's very helpful for us to do that this week because I need to land everything I possibly can I don't need to lose because of um, missing a move. So that's kind of the play there And last but not least as you already kind of saw a little bit we have Seismitoad. Um, lo and behold Seismitoad was a trade specifically meant for Soy. Um, I have used it to pretty well avail I think in the last couple of weeks But it is a counter for Soy team respectively a water ground type is really good only really weak to grass uh, which means Tangrowth is coming this week 100%. I didn't really knew that. So, uh, but the reason I'm using Seismitoad here, and I did have Gastrodon earlier in the season, Gastrodon's too, Gastrodon's too slow. Um, and also not really tanky enough, doesn't offer any offensive presence. Seismitoad does all of that. Um, and it can kind of be defensive in the same same frame of mind. So uh, the point of Seismitoad is literally just to be a defensive pain in the butt, as well as have a really good typing that can deal with that... Um, that can deal with the left uh, key that we're trying to counter here. Um, Seismitoad is a uh, is is a bold nature boosting that defense over attack, which is a I had to. Um, this is the one I used last week, I think, and I had to change some stuff. Um, it is water absorb as well. Instead of running split swim, I don't have a rain setter, um, and I kind of mitigate that a little bit on cleft key as an option. Because um, I do have Swiss Swim Seismitoad as a, as a possibility. So if he brings rain, he probably might not use it because he might think I'm Swiss Swim. Water Absorb is here to wreck the shop of Road and Wash. I need another counter for it. As I said, Rillaboom is my main counter, but I do have Seismitoad as a backup option just in case everything sucks and I decide to lose for some reason. Um, I have Water Absorb to deal with, um, you know, if he's Choice Scarf and Hydro Pump, I have Water Absorb to deal with that. Plus, I can use Seismitoad to. To do some work there and i am running earth power toxic stealth rock and sludge bomb so this is a really good switch in against rotom especially if it's scarf because if it hits a hydro pump or it can't use anything against me essentially and i can kind of just sit there and either toxic something or stealth rock something or stealth rock on the next turn get some chip damage and mitigation damage so seismitoad is going to be a nice defensive pokemon for that um toxic i feel like is really useful this week because getting that little bit of chip damage here and there is going to be a lot of fun um, and also very needed to deal with Sui's team. I, I talked about, oh, I talked about, I changed to New York for a second. I talked about all the calcs that, you know, Grassy Glide and so many percentages and, you know, crits on Shadow Claw with these mons and, and everything. Having Stealth Rocks or Toxic kind of allows that to hit a little bit more consistently. And so I don't have to really try RNG as much. Um, obviously, I have to try RNG with Toxic because it's 90% accurate for some reason. Um, unless you're a poison type, then it's 100. Um, but I do have Stealth Rocks as an option there. I thought Rocks were good, especially with his very, very big Rock weakness. Um, things like uh, Volcarona being quad weak to it. Blaziken being weak to it. Um, Darmanitan being quad weak to it. So having those kind of little chips here and there will be very helpful for this team. Plus, Soy likes to switch a lot. He likes to have a, a the commanding position on the field, which is something that might bite him in the butt with Rocks. Um, as well as Toxic. So, hoping that this can work for me. Um, I do have to worry about clicking Toxic, though, because Klefki is probably going to be in every single match. So, as long as I kind of know that Klefki could come out, we probably would just click Earth Power. Honestly, doesn't work. And I built it specially this week because of the Klefki. Um, I've, I'm forcing Soy to run both physical and running um, physical screens and special screens, that being Reflect and Light Screen on the same set. Uh, which means his moveset would have to be at that point foul play 
Um, but no, not Final Play. It would have to be Play Rough, Flash Cannon, and both screens. So if he leaves out one of the screens, we can either hit him with offensively with Darmanitan, or Rillaboom, or Aerodactyl, or hit him in specially defensively with Scythe. So we just have to kind of play around that and see where it goes. See where it goes. Hopefully things go well with us. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much my my counter to that Clef Key, as well as a very annoying threat and a way to deal with what really stuffed me last time, which was the Choice Scarf Rotom Wash. So uh, I have that covered, and if Soy doesn't change his team, which I feel like the Rotom Wash will come Scarfed if it does show up, um, the Tanky set really doesn't matter that much, especially with Rillaboom being on my team, so the Scarf makes so much sense to throw on, this, on, to throw on the team because he can bolt switch in and out. Um, but Seismitoad is a really good counter to that. And that's why it's here. So it beats... Um, did I talk about its items and stuff? No. I talked about its build. It is running leftovers. I build it more defensively. It is max uh, special defense and HP with a bold nature boosting that defense over um, attack, which means it's sitting at about roughly 200, a little over 200 HP, a little over uh, about 130 special defense and about a hundred uh, defense. So it is a pretty tanky mod at level 50. Uh, a lot of the calcs I talk about are based at level 100. This one was built specifically at level 50 um, because it's 52. Um, and I didn't really feel like getting it to level 100, but, uh, yeah, um, we run, um, Seismitoad against Darmanitan, um, occasionally, it's not a really good matchup, um, I have to, sorry, I have to message Soy, we're supposed to be battling now, and I'm taking too long to do with this, um, it can't beat Darmanitan, again, it depends on the set, and depends on what he's doing, uh, it beats Espeon, depending on the set. Clef Key, depending on the set. Uh, obviously, I talked about Light Screen being a pain in the butt. Um, uh, so I don't really want to switch a root items, so that would be a bad thing to happen, but I can sit here and set up on the Clef Key a little bit. Uh, it is a counter to Rotom Wash. It beats Crafty on occasion. It beats Tangrowth on occasion. That's why we got Sludge Bomb. Same with Togekiss. Uh, just options for those two. Um, there, it is a primary counter to Torkoal, so if it wants to try to sit there and do stuff, um, the only thing is Solar Beam would be a pain in the butt at that point in time, so we have to watch out for that a little bit. And, um, it does have a good matchup versus Volcarona, although Giga Drain would be a pain in the butt. So, uh, not really great for a lot of things. It's kind of there to scare him a little bit, um, with the, especially with the Rotom Wash. Um, as well as the Darman, as well as Rillaboom, kind of keeping that off the field as much as possible is kind is the option this week, because uh, that is a big problem. And if I can get rid of either the Rotom Wash or the Klefki from having their way with my team, I've done something good, and I can I can move on from there. So um, yeah, that, that's kind of the point. Um, yeah, uh, according to team builder, I have to tell. I'm I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to lose because of the 15-minute rule for matches, so I just want to make sure Soy knows everything. And um, That is a rule that we have established here, so uh, you can't miss your match by 15 minutes. I just wanted to make sure he could touch base and let him know that I was doing this. Uh, but that is my team. What do I think Soy is going to bring? That's a good question uh, because it's really easy. It's actually like the easiest thing in the world because I think it's literally the scene you brought last time. Haxorus, Klepki, Togekiss. Thing with the Manitan and Rotom Wash. This is a Fire Water Grass Core and a Fairy Dragon Steel, Steel Core. And I think it works well for us, uh, well against my team. I kind of brought a pseudo Fairy Dragon Steel Core. I don't have a, um, a Dragon or a Steel type, but I do have um, kind of Aerodactyl that can fill a role as well as Rillaboom. So um, I did bring a Fire Water Grass Core, though. I thought Seismitoad, Rillaboom, and Darmanitan paired really nicely this week, um, especially as a two offensive. Um, a grass offensive and a fire offensive, plus um, a very defensive and really good typing water type, um, kind of mesh really nicely together. So I'm hoping that works for us. That's kind of the play here. But uh, I do think Hactress is coming. It kind of causes problems because it's really fast and it can do a lot of damage. Nine Tails is a good counter for that. That's why I have it as well as Mimikyu as we talked about. Um, he didn't bring it last time we fought, so he, he had it on his team, but he didn't bring it to a battle. So it kind of might be there for a scare tactic, but I do think he brings it again just because of it. Um, plus, we don't know what set Haxorus is using, and once we figure out the set of Haxorus, that's when Haxorus loses, because it can run pretty much every move, um, but it can't run every single move at the same time. It only has four move slots. Uh, last time, we didn't have a Dragon move, so if we brought Gudra or, um, or Gastronon, week two, we could have won there. 
Uh, we don't know what the set was last week because he didn't bring it. The set last time, not last week. Because he didn't bring it. So um, once we figure out what Haxorus' move set is, we can kind of run the fade and deal with it uh, correspondingly. Klefki, as I said, it would be remiss if Soy didn't bring it. It's 100% coming every battle on the field, on the team. It's going to be a pain in the butt. We have counters for it with literally everything, um, barring the Nine Tails, really. Um, and at that point, I just set up in its face. So it's got a quick flash game to kill me. I'm faster than I can set up fail. So uh, that's kind of the point. Nine tails. I mean, I do have sleep for it. So that, that would be an option. I could kind of sleep it. Uh, but uh, yeah, nine tails is kind of not really good against the cleft key. But the cleft key is going to be really nice. Prankster, a really good ability, as we've said. Took advantage of that with um, Grim Snarl, which I'm not bringing this week because I don't want to try to deal with that because I never bring the, the Grim Snarl into a match. So I'm not even going to try to bring it. I'm going to use it for, you know, something else in the back, like Rillaboom, um, to kind of scare him out a little bit more. Rather than the, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, what is it called? The Grim Snarl. Um, Toga Kiss is going to be coming. Crit Kiss, Flinch Kiss is a really good set. I don't think it's bulky. That's kind of why I was like, asterisk the bulky set on, um, on one of the calcs there. Because I don't think it's going to be bulky. But if it is, um, it, Darmanitae might struggle with it or struggle with it so um i don't think it's going to be coming that way i think it's a crit flinch kiss at the typical standard one of those that's what he's run every week it's probably what it is um uh, it'd be remiss not to bring it tangrowth um he's having it here because they, he needs a grass type to deal with my ground water type yes that's his whole reason for having tangrowth is to beat seismitoad at this point nothing else on my team really wants to deal with it either but um it's to beat seismitoad it's to be it's to you know, deal with Glissopod or Politoed if I bring those. Um, so I, I am showing a big rain team with 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 Politoed Seismitoed. Um, so I would expect to ten growth for kind of that mitigation um, to deal with my water types in rain. Although Assault Vest is probably the, the go for set for it. Um, Darmanitan definitely shows up in my opinion. Fast Mon does a lot of damage and can be a nice little sweeper at the end. Probably Scarfed, if I had to take a guess, uh, that are Life Orb, in case he wants to switch moves. If it's Life Orb, he kind of plays in my hand there with Darmanitan. If it's Scarfed, RNG Bless, because I need something to work in my favor on that battle, um, in that case. Um, and then, last but not least, the Rotom Wash. Ran my team last week. We fought. Um, definitely a good option for the team. Kind of why I'm bringing Seismic Toad. Um, really good counter for my ways to beat the rest of his team, which is Darmanitan and Aerodactyl at that point. Um, and also just really powerful, a great defensive and offensive mon at the same time. So definitely expect that. Um, that's the team I think he's going to be bringing. That's my team. I hope you guys enjoyed the team builder. I'm going to get into this battle real quick. Sorry for a little bit longer one. I have a little bit more of a niche um, to talk about this time around because I'm running random sets in some cases of the imagination and also very jank sets in other cases. And I uh, wanted to explain it because this is the championship battle. So it all comes down to this. Uh, we win or lose the season by winning or losing here. Um, which is kind of unfortunate because, you know, I, I would kind of feel bad because Soy, Soy's definitely played extremely well this season. Um, and despite the fact that you might not think he's the best battle, he's really good. And um, I would feel bad for winning because he's played extremely well and he kind of deserves it. But also I would really like to win because i'm competitive like that um so we're gonna do our best with what we got i might throw in the second round we'll see what happens <laughs> um but i'm gonna play i'm gonna play for fun i'm gonna play for you know the best i can with the team i can and trust that i built well so that's gonna be the plan i hope it goes well i'll see you guys tomorrow at 1 p.m eastern for the final battle of the season make sure you guys support both me and soy um let me know what you think of the team in the comment section down below let me know what you would do differently and uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, tell me how crazy I am. Um, love to know that. You should give me a number. QOTD number. That would be helpful. Uh, but I'll catch you guys over in the battle. Thank you for watching this episode of uh, the, well, this episode. This this team builder for the champion battle. I'll see you guys over there in the next battle tomorrow. And just wish me luck. But until then, my name is Chaos Coach of your Detroit Red Wingles. We'll catch you in the championship battle. Stay safe and as always.